Mirrors as we know them today were invented by the Venetians, but the process of how they were made was a secret for nearly a century. It was at the end of the 16th century that the secret was leaked through industrial espionage and the global mirror market was born. Now the industry generates over $100 billion every year. But how are they made? The very first hurdle is procuring quality glass. Although it's the main component of mirrors, glass is a very poor reflector by itself, reflecting only 4% of the light which strikes it. However, it does possess the property of uniformity, which makes it a top contender for an effective base in the mirror market. It's also easier to mold into various shapes for specialty mirrors. Given these qualities, it's an industry favorite. In terms of production, glass sheets are primarily made from silica, which can be refined or mined from sand. There's also synthetic glass, which is made from synthetic fused silica. After the glass arrives at the factory, it's transported on a conveyor belt to the washing station. Their sprayers blast the glass with water and cerium oxide, a powder obtained from various minerals, the most common being monazite. Rotating brushes scrub and polish both the top and bottom surfaces, thereby removing oils and any other impurities. The whole process takes about a minute and a half, after which the glass sheet is ready to be coated with a reflective material. Before that can happen, the glass is sprayed with piping hot demineralized water. This is because the minerals in ordinary tap water may damage the metals that are applied next. The first metal to be applied is liquefied tin, which goes on to the back of the glass. It allows the primary reflective metal, silver, to adhere to the glass, which doesn't otherwise. The applied silver is also in liquid form and is mixed with a chemical activator. Within seconds of being applied, the silver begins reacting with the tin and hardens the surface of the glass sheet. As it does, you begin to see a reflection. The process is called silvering and was actually invented by the German chemist Justus von Liebig. Before the discovery of silvering, lead and mercury were used as reflective materials. These metals were quickly abandoned in favor of silver, which both had a higher reflectance and was not toxic to humans. Although these days, modern mirrors use aluminum rather than silver. Aluminum actually has the highest level of reflection out of any other metal in the ultraviolet and infrared spectral ranges. It's also more readily available, which is why it's no wonder that it has sidelined silver in the glass market. After the silver has been applied, the glass sheet is run through a series of sprayers that rinse off the excess silver, which gets recycled back into the system. To protect the silver and seal it to the glass, the factory coats the glass sheet with two layers of paint. However, these coats aren't enough to protect the silver by themselves. For some extra protection, the factories first coat the glass with a layer of copper. Afterwards, sprayers rinse off the excess copper and the glass panel is run through a dryer, which drives up the temperature to 71 degrees Celsius. This evaporates any moisture on the surface of the glass within 75 seconds. Now the panel passes copper side up through a curtain coater. The machine is so named because it runs a continuous curtain of paint across the conveyor belt. After the first coat is applied, the glass runs through a dryer at 99 degrees Celsius. When the paint is cured, it's time for another coat. The second coat is a different color than the first one, just so it's easier to differentiate between the coats. Once the second coat is done, the panel of glass is run through another dryer. This time, the curing period is twice as long and at a higher temperature, 118 degrees Celsius. The glass panel is now given an acid wash to remove any unwanted metal residue and is then handed over to a team responsible for quality control. These people ensure there's no fault with the surface of the glass. If they find such a fault, like a bubble on the surface, instead of wasting the entire glass, they simply cut that portion out. Once the mirror is complete, it's cut into the desired shape depending on the type requested by the client. Cutting is usually done through a saw with diamond dust embedded in the tips. This is because diamond, being the strongest material known on Earth, can cut through glass like a hot knife cuts through butter. The mirror is now ready to be shipped off to locations around the Earth. Let us know in the comments what else we should do a video about. And check this video right here!